Hello, rodeo fans. Welcome to the first episode of Reno Rodeo 365 for this upcoming year. I know we're just taking a break from Reno Rodeo that wrapped up a few weeks ago, but the fun never stops here. So sitting next to me, you know his voice if you are tuned in to Northern Nevada Radio, but Bob Richards from KBUL 98.1 is in our studio. Wow. I did. I'm yeah. in your domain. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Reno. Hi. No, I'm <laughs> This is awesome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great to great to have you here. I know I was on cable a few times leading up to the rodeo, and we yeah, talked about you. It. This girl rocked it. She's like multi-dimensional. I mean, if you need a co-host, I've been trying. To you know, you know how to. So I, I know a girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing today? The first one. Yeah, the first oh, one. The first one. Full cycles. I mean, rodeo fans. Hey, both. these are our people. Yeah, I guess yeah. we share people. We do share people. We share a lot of people. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, we wanted to talk about the Reno Rodeo kickoff concert just because that's what opens up the best 10 days of summer. And now that we've had a chance to kind of relax, maybe enjoy the 4th of July, Reno Rodeo volunteers are already gearing up for next year. And I know you are too when it comes to picking the artists. So before we get into that process, let's talk about Russell Dickerson and Priscilla Block. Right? Yeah. Am I right? Did you trust Bob? Did you trust Bob? <laughs> If you didn't go to the concert, you're missing out, and you should prepare for it next year. It's always the Wednesday night before rodeo starts. Uh, oh, I'll answer your question now. I'll, I'm done being <laughs> silly. Uh, Russell was awesome. Uh, like I said, he's, he's one of those up-and-comers who's just you know, about ready to break through. Uh, so he brought the energy. He brought the fun. What did you think? You got to meet him. Yeah, I did. We've got some it's interviews. In water. He was great. He had energy. You know, I think we talked about this on the morning show a few times that maybe not the energy you expect when you hear his music, but mm -hmm. when you meet him in person or see him live, he really brings it. Yeah, he really does. A lot of his hits were, are, are on the slower side. So I think he, you know, uh, uh, equals that out in his live shows and does just a lot of uh, fun stuff. Yeah. And the opener, Priscilla Block, she was awesome. I mean, she is fiery, feisty, full of energy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I was going to, she, she calls it, uh, never mind, sass and ass, but we can edit that. We can say that. Okay, yeah, yeah that's what she's all about. So she's fun. Uh, good things are going to come from her. And, again, we're catching her kind of on the way up. So Yeah, absolutely, and I think that was great. So now the part, the anticipated question I'm sure people have is, you know, why then? Why not a bigger artist like Morgan Wallen? Which, have you tried to get tickets to his show? Those are expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, number one is budget. Uh, they are expensive. Uh, Morgan Wallen uh, demands, you know, a high price. And so uh, hopefully one day we will get there. Uh, but it's it's not just budget. It's uh, uh, are they on the West Coast? Are they uh, available? Are they flying in? Are they busing in? Do they have their equipment? Do they have everything they need? So a lot of uh, that comes into consideration. Uh, first, you know, are they close to Reno during Reno rodeo time is, is the first thing I look at. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked to Russell Dickerson, who's going to be, or who was in California there shortly after mm -hmm. he performed for the Reno rodeo kickoff concert. And so having him out here, he was going to explore the area, maybe mm -hmm. Lake Tahoe. So I think that does probably play a hand in, in just the convenience factor behind it. Yeah, if they are in on the West Coast, uh, it's a cheaper price. Yeah. Looking ahead to next year, I know Reno Rodeo is already thinking about the performance as far as the rodeo goes. When it comes to the concert, is that already on your radar, or do we wait till it gets a little closer? Have you heard of an up-and-coming artist, George Strait? Doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> George, I'd love to get you. No. Um, he actually lives in the same town as my parents do in Texas. So I guess if they ever see him at the coffee shop, I could have him ask if he's free. There you go. We have an in. <laughs> we have an in. Um, no, I'm looking now. Uh, it's probably a little too early because artists need to plan their tours and, you know, where they're going to be in 2025. So I'll start looking uh, uh, this fall. I'd love to have it booked by Christmas and on sale by the first of the year. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, much like the rodeo, they start the day after, you know, I'll take a few weeks off and start here uh, soon, uh, you know, looking at availability. Yeah. And by the time our fans see this, you'll be about to head to night in the country. So the fun never stops for you. Your summer is just, you know, it's still cruising. It's still cruising along. Come on out. Yeah. Night in the country. We'll talk about this. All right, one more question for you. Do you take requests? I know you do on the morning show, but when it comes to the concert, should we have people comment? Should we have people tell you who they'd prefer? Or is this uh, a Bob thing and, and we have no say, you know? C can the people get what the people want? 
Uh, unfortunately, my uh, large ego doesn't permit that. Uh, it's all about what I want. You do have your sunglasses on. You <laughs> might as well just wear them inside. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hit me. <laughs> no, absolutely. I would love to maybe for you to do a poll here on uh, 365, uh, put it up on the Reno you know, Rodeo page, share it with cable. And, yeah. you know, who do you want to see next year? I'm always open. You know, uh, uh, this is a great uh, country music town. Uh, you guys have a great pulse on country music, and if there's like a newcomer that you know you dig, and I should be uh, checking out certainly for the the opening act. Uh, yeah, I welcome all suggestions. Let's do it. Absolutely, and tell the people where they can hear you if somehow they live under a rock and don't know. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. You can find me six to ten in the morning on Cable 981, the Bull Station. Great partners with the Reno Rodeo, so I appreciate the opportunity to come on and do video because I love video. <laughs> yeah, you've got the face for radio. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> All right, well, Reno Rodeo fans, it's Bob Richards with 98.1 KBUL radio station. And maybe next year when we announce the Reno Rodeo kickoff concert artist, we can go live in the studio. Can we? I like that. I like yeah. that idea. Yeah. All right. You heard it here first. <laughs> Keep an eye on her. She's going places. I'm trying to steal her. <laughs> well, there's enough for me to go around, so maybe we'll get back on, uh, on 98.1, and we'll just talk to those fans 6 to 10 in the morning. All right. All right, Reno Radio fans, we'll be back in just a second. Check out these interviews that we were able to have with Russell Dickerson and Priscilla Block. Just reminisce on those first nights of the Reno Rodeo, and we'll be back in just a moment. Reno Rodeo fans, I am pumped because one of our very first guests here in the studio this week is no one other than Priscilla Block here in the biggest little city. Thank you so much for coming and enjoying and kicking off Rodeo Oh with my us. gosh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm like ready to party. Woo woo. <laughs> ready to kick this off, rub some dirt on it. I want to jump into just a little bit about you for those that maybe are new to the block party. Yeah. <laughs> what um, you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, that could get scary. Yeah, I know yeah. we don't, you need you might need a lot more time. But All right. What it's you Facebook got? Facebook friendly. We'll keep it PG. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so how'd you get your music start? What took you to Nashville? Let's go back just a couple years. Yeah. So I started writing songs when I was 15 and I moved to Nashville when I was 17. So a lot of people don't know that I've, I've been there for almost 11 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And um, just started playing in the bars, doing the Nashville thing. And 2020 when was, it, was when it kind of all changed for me. And I started posting a lot of videos online and had some traction and here we are, you know, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, everyone knows the internet can get you in trouble and quarantine for some had a lot of ups and a lot of downs, yeah. but for you, I had both. Had <laughs> both. But TikTok is where real yeah. things really got hot and heated. So tell us a little bit about that first video. What got the traction? Oh my gosh. Well, I really, to be honest, when I got on, when I was on, on TikTok early on, I thought it was just a dancing app. Like I didn't, there was really, I, are you a dancer? No, but I was learning the WAP in my kitchen. Don't get me wrong. No, but there wasn't a lot of um, country artists on the app at the time. I mean, I I was just like, maybe I should just put my music on here and see what happens. And I mean, it was like overnight, like thousands of fans all over the world were just like commenting on my videos and were like, I love yes, your music. We love the fans. And like the fact that you can reach that many people so quick was something that I wasn't used to because I was used to playing in the bars sure. and um, I kind of just dedicated all of my quarantine to putting music on the internet and it turned out the fans really liked it and then I wrote just about over you and <laughs> I went from being evicted out of my apartment to signing a record deal in a matter of weeks so that it's is yeah it's kind of crazy <laughs> all right well you mentioned there are some highs you mentioned there were some lows what was a struggle in all of that you know the instant fame almost and such so many changes in such a short period of time oh my gosh I mean I to be honest I really wasn't expecting it you know and I don't think you ever are but my life really you know I, like I said I went from being evicted out of my apartment <laughs> to everyone trying to like roll out a red carpet and yeah. For some, that's really exciting, and and there were were parts of that were uh, that were really exciting for me. But it's also scary too, because you're like everyone's wants a piece of this right now, and so like my biggest yeah they do look yeah, at you. yeah hey but I I think that the, the the only fear that I had was just whatever move I made, I just wanted to make sure it was with like a team that really, really believed in me. Cause totally. I believe in myself a lot and that can get scary, yeah. you know? So, but it's been really, really good. It's, it's just been a, such a crazy, crazy journey. We love it. So what would childhood you say to Priscilla Block now? Oh my, I would say, girl, keep, just keep doing what you're doing. Like, don't let anybody to, you know, tell you that you need to hush it down or, you know, tone things down. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I feel like people just people like, like people. Yeah, yeah me being me and and I'm glad that I never changed Absolutely. that you well, know we are too <laughs> so what have been any do you have a pinch me moment of like oh my gosh I cannot believe this happened oh my goodness um I mean going out Shania Twain that was pretty awesome yeah. like what <laughs> I, I just don't even when we got the call for that I was like what <laughs> is happening um you know I just celebrated my first number one with Justin Moore yeah. and that was something that just I'm so thankful for. I'm thankful that he believed in me on that song. And it, there's, I mean, I, I could go on and on. It's the coolest experience. I'm, I really just feel really lucky and grateful that like I get to do this. Yeah. So with that number one, what do we expect from you? I know there's new music coming out. Yeah. Can you tease a little well, bit? Well, Good On You is my current radio single, which I feel like everyone's loving. So we're super excited about that. Um, we might drop like maybe a potential different version of that song. Give the oh, fans a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and then Friday, I'm releasing three songs. Um, so it's it's a little EP. It's called PB2. And we got Bad Guy, Apartment, and Hell Out of a Hometown that are coming. So Do we get to hear those at the Reno Rodeo kickoff concert? Um, yes, you're going to hear, oh. you'll definitely hear a new song tonight. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Just a, a bunch of new music this year. That's kind of what we're, we're working on. Yeah, that's amazing. So we love that you're here. We, you know, you're kicking off. Have you been to a rodeo before? Oh yeah, girl. I, I, I mean, I, figure, I okay. am thriving here. I'm ready. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for kicking off the start to Reno Rodeo. It is everyone in Northern Nevada's favorite 10 days of June. So we Aww. are just so happy to have you here. Yay. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thank y'all yeah. for having me. Of course. Well, we will check you out on Friday with that new music. And of course, listen to you all over the radio, especially our local hometown radio, Cable 98.1. Everyone, this is Priscilla and give her all of your love on social media. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Bob from Cable 98.1. We are at the Reno Rodeo kickoff concert presented by Cable 98.1. Look who dropped in for a quick visit. Here we are. <laughs> Russell Dickerson, everybody. That's right, That's baby. That's right. Making it happen. Making yes. it happen. Welcome. Th hey, thanks for having me, dude. You couldn't ask for a better night, man. Oh, the weather's perfect. <laughs> it's like, what, 80... 83 yeah. degrees right yeah, yeah. now no humidities no mosquitoes uh, no bugs none of them welcome none to of reno <laughs> you're actually doing this kind of a west coast family thing can i say that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah man uh, yeah, we're, so. we're 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 like our next show's in california so it's like why would we not just stay out for a week and hang out and go see some go see some sights go see the 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 crazy american west you know <laughs> tell me you're going to lake tahoe Oh yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. we're cool. gonna hit up Tahoe. We're gonna hit up some national parks. It's yeah. gonna be beautiful. Well, let's talk music real quick. Yeah, I, I know you got, and, and I don't want to. I'll let you if you want ruin this. I already know. I think everyone knows. You put it on socials, but uh, Bones. Yeah. Talk to me about that Bones, record, Bones, dude. <laughs> uh, this is by far maybe one of my favorite songs I've ever had, and uh, favorite songs I've ever written. I mean, I mean, really since yours, mm -hmm. I haven't felt this way about awesome. a song. And so, uh, yeah, man, I just like, I'm so pumped that it, that this song is, I just couldn't not put this song out as a single. Like I'm like over any other song that I've written in the last three years, I'm like, this one has to be the one. Like I know, I know this is the one. Man, we're ready. We're ready for new Russell Dickerson. Yeah, music. baby. We, we were playing "Good Day to Have a Great Day" because that's a great jam. Yeah, bro. That's a great summer yeah, jam, dude. It's a good. Yeah. It's a good morning drive song. Mm -hmm. You know, kick your day off right. Well, thanks for being here. We yeah. appreciate it. What can we expect tonight? Oh, dude. Well, we call it the Artie Party for a reason. We like to get a little rowdy, a little rambunctious, if you will, <laughs> and uh, a little tomfoolery will okay. happen. Okay. All right. A little for, hijinks. Yes, yeah. for ninety right. minutes. So get ready for it. Triple Tigers recording artist Russell Dickerson at the Reno Rodeo kickoff concert. Thank you so much, man. Cheers, baby. Get it. Branded screen printing. Get noticed. Get branded. Branded screen printing. A proud sponsor of the Reno Rodeo. Welcome back to Reno Rodeo 365. Sitting next to me is no stranger to the Reno Rodeo live feed camera. It's our co-host for Live at Five, Tom Cates, past Reno Rodeo president. Tom, how are you now that Rodeo has wrapped up? Uh, finally getting rested up. Yep. It's been uh, well, it's several weeks. We got everything taken down, put away. Went real smooth this year, and now we're starting for next year. So 
This will be my 36th rodeo, so I'm really looking forward to it. Who's counting, though, you know? I mean, we're only 330 days That's away, three but who's counting? <laughs> Tom, so we had a great time on Live at Five this year. We opened up the, show, the the rodeo each night with our Live at Five show and just really kicking off the segment and then jumping into the night. What was your favorite part about Reno Rodeo this year? Uh, I enjoy the whole thing, Jen. I just, there's no favorite parts to it, you know, and it's just, I enjoy the the camaraderie of the of the guys that I'm with every day and I've been on the arena committee for all these years, and we work slack every morning, and we got a, a really nice group of, of guys and gals that, that help us down there, and it's just, it's just an enjoyable time. You know, I look forward to it every year. Yeah. Well, it was great to spend a little extra time with you. And speaking of Slack, I know we touched on it almost every day, encouraging people to come out and watch Slack at 10 a.m. in the rodeo arena. Did you see a, a growing rodeo fan audience out there, maybe a few people extra here and there every day? No. <laughs> it doesn't seem we have uh, we have some summer groups of kids and they they came in every morning, but they came in right during the uh, tie down roping. So they're all cheering for the calves. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's just it's a, a very small group of people. I mean, contestant relatives and things like that. Other than that, people are really missing something because there's some some really good times and some good good uh, competitors out there in the daytime. Yeah, absolutely. It runs like a real rodeo performance. So as we lead up to next year, of course, you'll see a lot of myself and hopefully Tom again on camera with us. But encourage yourselves to go out and watch Slack if you can't make it to one of the nighttime performances. It's pretty awesome yeah. to see. And it's free. Yeah. And it's free. <laughs> and it's free. <laughs> Well, Tom, let's jump into some of these winning rides. Speaking of rodeo performance, you know, we see a lot from slack to the evening performance out there in the arena, but a lot comes down to that final night when we give the winners their silver spurs. So let's recap some of those rides and right, talk about... There, there were some fantastic stock this year, as you well know, Jen. And, yeah. and uh, the Cowboys, they went after it, and there were some awesome rides. So I'm looking forward to looking, looking at them again. Yeah, let's check those out. All right, let's let's look at bareback again, and in our first event out, and this is always my favorite event because this is what I I used to try to do back when I was much younger. But R.C. Landingham uh, from Hat Creek, California, and he had a he had a fan club here. He had they were had signs out the window and everything up in the A and K booth, and R.C. drew a great horse that night, and here he is getting ready to go. Look at that spur ride. I mean, this kid really put it on that horse. <clears throat> yeah, and we're looking at here the way that he spurs over the shoulders of the horse. It's really important for them to have that consistent rhythm as the horse bucks. That's what the judges are looking for. Um, so as we as we watch it again in slow motion, you can see that every time the horse bucks, his feet perfectly come over the shoulders in rhythm. Um, and that's just what makes him a good rider overall and, and no shock that he won the Reno Rodeo. Not at all. And he's having a great summer. He, in fact, he just won Calgary and came off with $50,000. So that's Canadian, but it'll kind of figure out they add that into their, their finals for the NFR. So he'll come away with about 36000 to his his name up from up there in yeah. American money. So RC's on a, on a good chance, uh, good track of winning the bareback this year. All righty. Uh, Saddle Bronc, we're going to go with Ryder Wright, uh, one of the famous Wright families. And I remember the very first time I saw Cody, uh, he won the circuit finals for the very first time. And these kids were all, you know, five, six, seven years old with him and, and got to meet them all then and to watch these guys ride now. And they, they all spur like their dad. And, I mean, he was perfection on a horse. He could really get after it. And Ryder comes away with 88 points and – pretty hard to beat that so yeah. he's also had a good summer uh, so far at the Cody Stampede Rodeo so I can't I'm sure we'll expect to see big things for him as we round out the rodeo season and for those that don't know the rodeo season and circuit itself ends um, in September so it doesn't go through the calendar year like we're used to um, so these guys really just have a few months left to rack up the dollars that will get them and qualify them to the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas in December so a, a win at Reno really does a lot for these guys. And I know Ryder, Ryder will be one of them there. Probably his brother, Rusty, will be there also. Okay, we're going to look at the Bulls, final event of the night. And the Bulls won most of the week, as you know. Two nights we had no, no one cover a bull. But finals night we had 
we had the 10 top best riders and and Tristan Hutchins coming in had a score of 90 so he was sitting right at the top and uh, he was pretty hot he did very well in the extreme bulls that Thursday night before and and he rode his bull for 90 prior to that so we're going to get a look at coming out here on on his final bull yeah, and as we watch him prepare, a lot of thought goes into it. You know, money's on the line. And this year at Reno, there were a good handful of nights where we did not have a lot of cover to bull riders, which means that, no, not a not a handful or more made it over eight seconds. So taking your time in there can really make or break that ride. Usually, uh, watching these kids, the longer they wait in the shoot, the worse it is because the, the bulls get, get really anxious and they get ornery and uh, – the kids that get in there quick and, and get out on them are, are much better off. But Tristan, he was on his game that night, and you just watch him, his balance over the top of the shoulder there, and he's now he's starting to spur, and which racks up the points. So he comes away with a 90 and a half, which nobody came even close to it. So. <laughs> Yeah, and he's already earned over $600,000 in career earnings and taken home several PRCA titles this year, including Red Bluff and the Ellensburg Rodeo. Um, he won round one, five, six, and ten at the NFR in 2022. So I expect to see big things from him this season, especially with a win like Reno under his belt. We could see him as a bull riding champion this year, which would be nice. He's really a nice young man. Yeah. I'm sure he would like that, too. We'll send him. We'll manifest that for him, Tom. All righty. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a look at that barrel racing, uh, a fan favorite event. And here's uh, the winner this year, Haley Kinsley. And she repeats. She won last year. She's riding through the nicest yellow mare sister. And watch this horse go. I mean, I, I just love watching her because it doesn't look like she's really blazing away. But... <clears throat> So she'll make a right-hand turn first, and then a left-hand turn, and then another left. And typically, uh, barrel racers decide which way to go based off of the way their horse turns uh, in the preferred direction. So if, if a horse is really good at turning left, then they're going to cho choose the pattern that Haley just did because there's two left turns. Uh, if a horse is better and quicker, maybe more limber, turning right, then they're going to go out to the left first so that they have two left-hand turns. We'll watch that one more time so we can see a little bit more what we mean when it comes to that barrel racing pattern. Um, it's also known as a clover leaf pattern, and it really comes down to um, – I'm sure the rider's got a lot to do with it, but you know, if your horse has a preference, you're going to lean on that a little bit more because that's with where they're going to excel. Uh, so we see her come out the gate hot on her horse sister. And of course, Haley, back-to-back uh, -back champs here at Reno, so she knows this arena well, and her horse does too. And this horse doesn't look like it's running fast, but I mean, it really, most of the times are 17 or above in our arena, and her time was below 17, so that, that's cooking in our arena. Yeah, I think she actually had a, a 1706, but she was just five tenths um, in front of the person right behind her. So, I mean, any mistake here would have cost her this win, and we're just we're, we're glad it didn't. I yeah, and she's having a great summer too. She's won a couple other rodeos, and I know, I know she finished second up in Calgary, and that gives her 30 grand towards the end of the year pot. So we'll see her in Las Vegas, and and I'm sure she'll do very well. Well, thanks, Tom, for recapping those with us. I know we didn't cover every event, so if you missed your favorite or you just want to know a little bit more about what we are talking about, you can catch every night's performance of the Reno Rodeo 2024 either on the Cowboy Channel or back on the Reno Rodeo Facebook page under the Live Winner Circle where we live stream every night's performance. And, of course, if we're counting down the days and you join us, we are 330 of them away from enjoying all of this fun over again. Tom, well, thank, thank you. Thanks for having me. Jen, I look forward to next year with you. Yeah. It was great. We'll see you back here in just a minute. Gas, snacks, and more extra mile by Jackson's. Let's go. A proud sponsor of the Reno Rodeo. Here in Northern Nevada, we know a thing or two about rolling up our sleeves and getting down to business. And just like the dedicated members, volunteers, and competitors who live and breathe rodeo, we know that life is about more than just hard work. It's about enjoying the ride. That's why we're proud to once again support the Reno Rodeo. Go an auto group, get in. And join, join the family. family. 
Keep it dirty. Get outside. Join the movement. A proud sponsor of the Reno Rodeo. Welcome back, rodeo fans. Sitting next to me is a first time rodeo fan. This is Ismay from England. Ismay, welcome to Reno Rodeo 365. Hello. Hello. So we wanted to have you on as a first time rodeo fan because it's just such an awesome experience to sit with someone the first time they've ever experienced what a rodeo is, what a cowboy is. So what, you know, you watched, we watched some of those rides with Tom just now. What did you think when you were looking at those? You know what, it was a massive shock because I didn't think cowboys were real. I thought they were just from the movies and I didn't think like rides like that actually happened. And it's quite cool to watch actually. Like I feel like that's really hard, but I'm also convinced I could do it. I love that kind of enthusiasm. So when you say you think it's just movies, have you seen Yellowstone or True Grit? Like what are what kind of movies are we talking about? Hannah Montana. <laughs> The Hannah Montana movie. I love it. Well, they do ride real horses in that. <laughs> yeah, but no, like, I just, obviously that's not the same kind of cowboy stuff, but I honestly thought they were fake, like old American movies, not in 2024. <laughs> like old westerns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not real. All right, so old westerns, Hannah Montana. I know there's small rodeos, obviously, all throughout the United States and some other countries. You know, Canada's got a rodeo circuit. Reno Rodeo is an exceptionally large rodeo for it to be kind of your first touch. But are there rodeos in England? Not that I'm aware of, because English riding is obviously very different to yeah. what you see out in the West. Like, it's more like equestrian-based and not... I'm um, riding on horses, trying to hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's very pretty, uh, English riding. Not that Western riding isn't, but it's definitely a level of elegance. Maybe you'll start the first r Western, the real, you know, a rodeo out there now that you've seen a little bit of what it in entails. Yeah, because I could definitely do the barrel racing. I watched that, and I'll start that in England. <laughs> All right, and what about the, the bucking horses? Anything? Any fan? Mm, I personally wouldn't be able to do it, <laughs> But I'm sure someone in England could. Yeah, yeah, some some crazy person out there would do it. We'll get you barrel racing. Um, maybe get a Western saddle first because the saddle horn really helps. The English saddles, I don't, I don't think that would hold you in there yeah, very they well. Are quite small. Yeah, they are quite small <laughs> compared to the ones I've seen on the wall over there. <laughs> I know we're in the president's box um, one of my favorite places on the Reno Rodeo ground so really cool that you got to experience this and maybe next year you can come back during June and experience the rodeo live and in person would I be able to sit in here <laughs> I think we can I think we know the right people yeah <laughs> there's real cowboys in here too what was your thought of just like a you know a, the cowboy hat the attire g g just a little a little taste of that like, to me, it's quite funny, like, <laughs> seeing it in real life, because that's just so, like, movie. It's not real, but... Like a costume. Yeah, like a costume. <laughs> you know, people say the same things about you English writers with your tights and your boots, so I wouldn't judge us too quickly. <laughs> but, like, to me, that's normal, and Cowboys isn't. <laughs> That's there. Well, Ismay, thank you for chatting with us. It's always fun to experience rodeo with someone for the first time. If you have remember your first time at a rodeo or even what your first impression of one was, whether that be Reno or a different one, drop it in the comments below. Let us know. I think it's so fun to reminisce on what your expectation was maybe before you went to your first rodeo and after. So let us know. And, and Ismay, thanks. Best of luck on your rodeo journey. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to watch you. Ismay the Barrel Racer is going to be Brit you know, Britain's first one. <laughs> You'll get an invite, don't worry. <laughs> I can't wait. All right. <laughs> Rustic Roping and Treasures, a proud sponsor of the Reno Rodeo. Welcome back, rodeo fans. Thanks for hanging out with us this summer at Reno Rodeo 2024. We had a great time when we rubbed some dirt on it. And a big shout out to all the volunteers that made it possible. Our president, Carrie Ann Sattler, you are amazing. I hope you see this and I hope you are relaxing with some very much needed TLC after a successful event. As we mentioned, volunteers make this happen and make it possible. If you came to the Reno Rodeo this year or you catch this at some 
point and you want to volunteer, we are always accepting volunteers and helping hands to make the show possible. There are only five paid staff a part of the Reno Rodeo Association, so every little bit of energy helps. And you can do that by going to www.renorodeo.com. Under the Get Involved tab, you will drop down Get Involved and you can see the Join Our Team Wrangler application. And you'll fill this out, turn it in with your a copy of your ID and a $25 application fee. Then you'll keep an eye out on your email for news about upcoming meetings and events. This is where we do a welcome. And the Manpower Committee will be accepting Wrangler applications probably by mid-August to early September. So they're always making modifications to it. Um, give them a little bit of time to wrap up from this last year's rodeo. And then, of course, submit your application. You can do it at any point in time throughout the year, but those will go live. You'll see them on the website. I would say safely by the beginning to middle of September and we hope to have you back next year as we are 330 days away from Reno Rodeo. Next year, seen with our president, Jim Neal, is it's a cowboy state of mind. Some really cool roots, I think, will be coming back to the Reno Rodeo. He hasn't shared much with us, but hopefully we'll catch him on Reno Rodeo 365 throughout this year to learn a little bit more about what we can expect in 2025. You can swing by the rodeo office at any time, grab yourself a sticker, and help us hype up the year as we prepare for another successful event. Until then, stay tuned on Reno Rodeo social medias for live coverage throughout the year of all things you need to know to get involved on Reno Rodeo 365. Hope you're having a great summer. I'm your host, Jen Fisk, and we'll see you back next time.